Hi, everyone. My name is Rolando. I'm the Director of Communications for the Fort McMurray 468 First Nation. With us today, you have Ronnie Sue Morin, the Director of the Industry and Government Relations uh, Corporation, and Kim is also with us. Kim, what's your title? Corporate Office Manager. Corporate Office Manager. Okay, thanks. So as you can see, um, Ronnie Sue and Kim, we're using Zoom, and you can see that they have chosen some virtual backgrounds. I'm just curious as to why these virtual backgrounds for you? So for me, it's oh, Dunder Mifflin because big fan of The Office and just thought it was kind of fun to be doing my interview from, from Dunder Mifflin. But uh, Ronnie Sue, what about your background? I like this background as soon as I saw it because it was one of the first things that impressed me the most when I moved out west and it continues to impress me. It just, it gives me a really good sense of uh, maybe a spirituality that I feel when I think of, of Alberta and, and relate it to the individuals that have lived there for many, many years. So it gives me just a sense of comfort when I think of Alberta. Thanks. Thanks. Kim? Oh, I chose this one because Ronnie Sue stole mine. <laughs> 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 but <laughs> also, <laughs> also with the hopes that spring is here. Yeah. Warmer weather. Green is going to come. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. Love it. As you can tell, Ronnie Sue is probably <laughs> moving up far north because her leg with the Aurora Borealis and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to try to talk a little bit more moderate and hopefully this works out really well for people. So this is uh, the first of uh, hopefully a series of videos where we're talking to people asking about um, their department within 468 and trying to get a sense of more about what they do and that kind of stuff. So, Ronnie Sue, why don't I start off with you and I just asking, you know, what is the Industry and Government Relations Corporation, IGRC? Well, IGRC is an advocate for the community, the nation, the, the members within the community as it relates to working with government and industry um, through our duty uh, to provide the opportunity for companies to engage and consult with First Nations on any activity or regulatory processes that are happening on First Nation or traditional lands. So um, we really provide an opportunity to communicate um, the, the needs, the concerns, and also to monitor and ensure that government and industry are honoring the, the First Nation, their treaty rights and their inherent right uh, as they uh, coexist. So a really important kind of liaison or acting between government, industry, and the nation itself, kind of a, a, a go-between. Okay. That's a very high level because when yeah. we start discussing uh, traditional land use studies, environmental monitoring, we have a lot of things happening. Um, but that's just a very high level of, of what originally brought the need for this office. Right. Uh, and so your office is located in Fort McMurray. You have different departments or functions within the IGRC that your team's broken up? Yes, compared to uh, many First Nations in Northern Alberta, our group is actually very small, but I'd like to say that we're very effective. We have about four different departments and um, we have the um, consultation specifically for direct community communication with industry, monitoring and managing that information, making sure our uh, uh, community knowledge keeper program is up to date and that we're meeting the deadlines that are needed. And then we have the government relations manager who is working with government to make sure we're getting the uh, capacity funding, the money that we need to make sure that our voice is heard in development of policy and directives, and also to ensure we're in line with uh, what those directives and policies say to ensure that we're being supported as a First Nation uh, monetarily in order to carry out the consultation uh, needs between us and industry and other stakeholders and other uh, resource users. And as right users, um, we have to be at the table. We also have land use um, specialist and he provides a very close link with the community ensuring that traditional land use studies are being done and that there's a collaboration between our office and as well the community to ensure it's well representative as it relates to what type of engagement is going to be needed on particular files and we've done a lot of work to ensure um, that we've identified individuals and we have a, a very good system called community knowledge keepers CKK um, to 
capture that information and make sure the individuals that have had experience or traditional land use and hopefully current and future land use is being captured. Right, right. So a lot of it is is making sure that the nation's interests are well represented. Are there other reasons why this IGRC function is important for the nation? Well, it's, it's very important because often we find ourselves in situations where maybe government uh, who's responsible for managing and monitoring First Nation um, uh, or industries applications and potential First Nation implications on their land use, that we're making sure that, that, that that's being taken care of and honored and is the environment being put as a priority and often even though it may be a regulatory process or approvals that are required, a lot of times there's a lot of things that get missed in the, in the process of government red tape. So how do we identify what our needs and our concerns are? And one of those particular needs happen to be the, the interest and the, the, uh, the heart of the community as it relates to the quality of the water and keeping the waters clean and safe. So what are we doing to ensure that industry and government are very clear that that's a priority for our community? No, oh, thank you, thank you. How has uh, COVID-19 impacted IGRC? Well, um, I would like to say minimally, but that's that's not true because I think everybody's impacted. Um, as, it, as it relates to, do we still need employees? Do we still have work? We have tons of work and sometimes work shifts when things happen and often we, we look at disadvantages and, and see what's being lost, but also disadvantages brings new opportunity. So we are very busy regularly with our consultation and it's important right now even with the challenges of not only COVID-19 but as well the economic uh, environment that the oil industry finds itself in that we're continually continually um, communicating with industry and government to ensure that whatever is being done to support what's happening at the moment is is happening uh, the nation relies a lot on our industry and as well um, the relations that we have with the government to ensure that First Nations interests are continuing to be represented. We also have uh, large MBAs and impact benefit agreements, so that's a mutual benefit agreement. Right. And those are relationships that we've signed off as a nation with industry to ensure that we have um, very good relationships as we coexist on the land and um, take responsibility through stewardship. So ensuring that the responsibilities are being taken care of. So we have a legal obligation as well to continue with those relationships and ensure we're, we're doing our part as we signed off on those agreements and as well that industry and government are doing their part as they agree to as well. So that sounds like it's it's been even during this time of self-isolation and social distancing that there's still a lot of responsibility for this team to keep on doing its work is that right most definitely and you know we i can't help but relate some of what we're feeling at the moment because i think in every circumstance that that um really impacts our day-to-day -day life and and really changes things up for us you know i look back at the wildfire and we're trying to take care of the most basic human needs, but at the same time, it's really important for the future of the community that we continue those relationships. And, and often because of these circumstances, it increases some of what is needed as it relates to communicating with some of these entities, because you know there's that continued need to ensure that we're all following through with what needs to be done from a collective effort. Right, right, thank you. Um, so, again, you know, we're, we're in the middle of COVID-19, we're all socially distancing and, and physically distancing uh, from one another. How is IGRC preparing to, to like run, to go after COVID-19? Like, how do you see your business being different, if at all? see our business being largely different. Um, as you know, because of the current economic um, environment, there's not a lot of new work, if none. So we have a lot of continued work that needs to happen. And do I see huge differences? Let's say once everybody's able to kind of go back to where we were before, I'm not sure if where we were before will ever be the same. But um, Kim, who's on this call with us, 
um, has provided a very integral role in regards to continuing our services and making sure bills are being paid, that we're still invoicing industry and collecting our, our money and our funds through all the um, mutual benefit agreements and impact benefit agreements. And um, that type of business is going to continue. And by doing that, not only are we honoring that uh, those agreements, but we're also showing ourselves as uh, collaborative um, members within uh, you know a bigger bigger picture so um, how do we keep things going by having individuals such as kim in place to ensure that that communication is still happening right. and that we're still keeping the doors of communication open meeting our responsibilities so as long as we keep doing that then when it's time to start ramping up for bigger and more business we're ready to go Great. No, that sounds very exciting. Like there's still a lot that has to get done and a lot of work that uh, you want to be on top of for sure. Uh, you talk about being a liaison but about representing the issues, uh, a liaison between industry, government and the nation, uh, representing the issues of the nation to those industry and government. How in the past has IGRC evolved elders, community members, just individuals? How have they been able to participate in the past? A lot of the time we use the elder and community members as um, knowledge holders for consulting with industry and government in advisory groups and other meetings. Right, right, okay. Um, and, and how do you see an opportunity for, for example, like for the nation's youth today to get involved or, or in the near future? Is there, is there an opportunity for them to get involved if they were interested in learning more? Yeah, for sure. We actually brought on one of the youth right before the COVID started in one of our advisory groups. And so she only got to attend one meeting before COVID happened. Right. but. But we do like to involve the youth in the meeting so that they could learn the knowledge that the elders and other community members share as well. Okay, great, thank you. Ronnie, Sue, so do you have anything else to add before we uh, wrap things up? Yeah, I, I guess I would like to add a little bit more to both the, um, the elders or traditional land users and as well with the youth. Um, there's an obligation that we have um, to provide the opportunity for industry and government to consult with the community or the nation. And one of the things that we provide is, is that connectivity and identify members within the community that have the knowledge or the experience that would benefit those conversations. And um, really, we identify some of those opportunities uh, through our Knowledge Keeper program because we brought in um, uh, Dylan consultant to help us interview all any member or any community member that wanted to be interviewed and and do a profile on what is their experience and what have they done uh, on the land that would be a good contributor to a land use study. We also provide invites to the youth uh, to participate regularly and we're hoping through different incentive programs and supporting some of uh, what the youth are doing for activities and growth and development that they will in turn provide some contribution to the IGRC program. We're, we're excited to have them learn about this and, and finding someone that's interested is going to be one of our challenges. So we really hope that some of the youth start taking up some of those opportunities that we're providing and actually start participating. Um, it would be very easy for IGRC to see a youth that would be very interested in IGRC and say, hey, maybe you're interested in having a program uh, for learning and studying and maybe we could sponsor somebody. There's a specific program in industry relations courses in Calgary and we'd be more than happy to support someone doing that. Uh, but we really need their interest as well. And someone that's really interested in being sponsored and, and taking a real interest in what the IGRC is and what can they do for their community and their members in the future. And we encourage that. So if somebody was interested, there would be support to help them understand, to learn about industry relations uh, through the nation. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. Okay. And Harry uh, takes the lead on communicating with our membership. 
and we always encourage and invite to the youth. Uh, we try to keep four to five elders if they're, they are available or want to participate. And then we also try to invite youth and if we get participation, great. And, but this education program could be another opportunity if someone was interested in the career. Great, thank you. Well, again, thank you, Ronnie, too. Thank you, Kimberly, for your time today. Really appreciate learning a bit more about the IGRC. It's been informative for me, for sure. Um, and so we've got Corporate Office Manager, Kimberly Shears, uh, working for I, the Industry Relations and Government Corporation, and Ronnie Sue Morin, the uh, Director. So thanks, everybody. Have a great day.